I love being outside. I love the early morning chairlift. Um, I like going fast, racing wise, getting to travel all over the US, even the world. So we'll do our two runs down here. Yep. And then I'm wondering if we just put stubbies up so then I can get on my snowboard. Yeah. Then we can change the course up. Drive it, don't be a passenger. As far back as I could remember, I was, I was outside. I grew up in the country and playing around on my bikes and four wheelers and three wheelers. And uh, yeah, always looking for that excitement, uh, trying to go faster, jump higher, longer. Um, you know, hanging out with my buddies, we'd always challenge each other to do stupid stuff on our bikes and three wheelers and four wheelers. Hawaii's household was pretty awesome. My parents are both skiers. I have a twin sister, Jessica, and a little brother, David. David and I were always jumping out of trees and stuff. Like my mom, she's just amazing. She probably worries about all of us, but our whole family, my sister and brother and I were always skiing. When I graduated high school, I was doing really good racing motocross at the amateur level, and my dad offered, he's like, hey, what do you think about racing snowmobiles? And, and we started chasing the, the regional and national tour. Things started ramping up, and I got approached by Polaris about, you know, what do you think about racing, racing our sleds, being part of our team? And you know, that was the start of my uh, you know, professional career. We were in Northern Michigan, and uh, first qualifier of the, the weekend, I get this horrible start, and things got all sideways, uh, literally. I got thrown from my machine down a really rough downhill section. My left knee took the bulk of the hit and hyperextended 180 degrees in the wrong direction. You know, on the third day after the injury, uh, they wake me up in, in the room and my whole family's in there. The doctor comes in and he uh, explains, we got, we got some tough decisions to make here. He basically said, in order for you to survive, we're gonna have to amputate about three inches above the knee. I realized right away that the prosthetic leg I was wearing definitely was not gonna work well for riding. I need, I need some, some suspension for my leg to absorb those bumps and jumps. And I'm gonna design a better knee, and I'm gonna call it the Moto Knee because originally I built it for motocross. So I, I uh, look back at all my experience in the workshop, tuning suspension components on my dirt bikes and snowmobiles, and uh, everything I learned through working with physical therapists and um, doctors and nurses and really understanding body mechanics. So I put all that together and. It's a process, there's a system to make your legs move in a proper way, so you know that was some schooling for me. In the spring of 2009, I found out about Summer X Games Adaptive Supercross with other amputees and paraplegics. And here I'm on the world stage of action sports in Los Angeles, California, racing Supercross on this gnarliest track ever. I ended up with a silver medal. I realized this equipment I was working on could benefit a lot of others. And so I'm like, you know what, I, I want to do something with this situation, you know, not only to help myself, but to help others achieve their goals too. So over the course of the next several months, I'm like, you know, I'm going to start my company and I'm going to try and create high performance, lower limb prosthetic equipment to, uh, to get people back in action. And uh, so I have some people to ride with, you know, when I want to go racing dirt bikes and, or snowmobiles. So yeah, 2010 was the start of, of Biodapt. So since my sister and I are twins, we are both going to be going to college at the same time. So my dad sort of let us know, hey, you got to get some type of scholarships. And I found out that the Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy had a ski team. Skiing was my outlet for sure. So that's where I'd get away from the academy, get away from the military. You know, we were going every weekend to races or nationals and probably one of my favorite parts of being at the academy was the ski team. On the weekend of April 11th, I was actually doing a scuba diving course. And then in the evening, my boyfriend, Tim, we went out on our paddle boards. We were out in the cove and then I looked up and I saw three lights coming at me really fast. So I dove off my paddle board to the left. I pushed off the bottom of the boat and I swam down. Then uh, the propeller just got my right leg. All the surgeons, everyone was just so surprised that I lived through that. And so instead of being sad that I lost my leg, everyone was just happy that I was alive. I 
I knew I could get back to flying. But the hardest part for me actually was how much longer it took than I wanted it to take. So it was eight months um, total in rehab. Then I went back to my base in Georgia. And then it was a total, I had to go undergo two medical boards and that took exactly a year. And then another two months later, I was returned to flying. I'm feeling awesome, excited, nervous. It'll be good. So my uh, best friend, Jimmy, he immediately after I lost my leg, he started researching what's the best legs, like you gotta get the moto knee. So I already knew that from him, but at the same time, my brother who knew Mike Schultz had reached out to him. They knew each other through the X Games community. Mike's like, when she's ready, we can get her skiing again. So I went to X Games and skied with Mike myself. That's for me when it actually felt like I could ski again. It was such a cool moment because, you know, at the beginning there was frustration. And then when she realized like, hell yeah, I can ski again. And, and you know, not only just ski, but really fly. So that was, that was a pretty rad moment. I went to the bottom and like gave Mike this huge hug because I was just so excited to ski again. You know, I, I figured out the skiing to understand, yeah, the moto knee is gonna work for skiing. Moto knee is gonna work for snowboarding. And border cross, which is a lot like motocross, I got talked into competing. It gave me a huge opportunity and, and how cool would that be to represent Team USA at a Paralympic Games and you know, maybe get on the podium. I was able to get into the gold medal round and brought home the gold for Team USA. When I just crossed the finish line, there's this 30 foot wide TV screen and it's, it's focused in on Sarah and the emotion. Like she's jumping and screaming and you know, she's crying. And I don't think I've ever felt a hug like that before. At Biodap, we supplied basically the majority of all the snowboarders with their equipment. Nine of the athletes ended up on the podium and uh, I think uh, earned a total of 11 medals while wearing Biodap equipment. So, I mean, that was extremely rewarding uh, Paralympic Games for me as, as an athlete as well as uh, you know, a company owner and prosthetic designer. So that's what brings us here right now is uh, Christy's gonna get one of the first production unit Alpine feet and we're gonna do some training and testing and get her dialed in with the Alpine foot and moto knee. So this is one of the cool tools that we just got. The laser beam. Oh, awesome. Yeah, right here. So we've got your, we've got your foot set in there. Now we just gotta so decide cool. what you wanna put on it for your customization. Okay. Yeah, so my call sign is clockwise. So that'd be really oh, cool. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. All right, look at that. It looks awesome. That was an excellent font choice. The game plan today is we're taking this as like a full on training day. Cool. We got two purposes. One is to get our equipment set up, aligned right. Uh, you know, get the right air pressures in the knee system. Oh, the other cool thing is we got timing, so we can uh, we can you know, actually figure out if things are going faster or slower. We can get our times and it's gonna be good. Having a prosthesis on a ski, like the biggest thing is trying to figure out where you're loading the ski, where you're shifting your weight. Uh, we gotta figure out a little better how to transfer more weight into the ski tip and get that proper rotation. Every adjustment you make is different, and so then you always have to just decide, is this better different, or worse different, or the same different? It's starting to come back to me what it feels like being in gates, where to turn from my line, and every run we did, it started getting more and more comfortable. Well, we started the day on skis, so I could help Christy kind of get dialed in. I've had enough of those two skis. <laughs> It's snowboard time. This is what I know. I feel a little more stable on this guy here. In 2015, when I first lost my leg, I started paying attention to the Paralympics and I thought, you know, I would love to try it for skiing. Is skiing an opportunity? Could I um, pursue the Paralympics? No doubt in my mind that, you know, with a full season of gate training she's gonna be she's gonna be hard to catch that's for sure 
Well, first of all, I was excited just to ski again at all after I lost my leg, but then to actually race again and have it be a lot easier than I was anticipating was just a lot of fun.